Good evening. My name is Omoyele Shore, a former presidential candidate of the African Action Congress and a staunch believer in the revolutionary struggles to build not only a new Nigeria, but a united, prosperous Africa and a better world. You see, several in Nigeria has had a chance to become the best country in the world. We have natural and human resources to accomplish this. However, and that's our big tragedy, the biggest of it all is that the enemies of our people are in charge of our existence. These people, as you all know them, are working with all the sections of the world who colonized us before, from the global north, the east, the Middle East, and the west. And as I speak with you today, the Nigerian people in their millions are in serious pains and once again facing untold hardship and renewed hostility for their hostage takers. Humanity has only one excess. Humanity is what it is called. Whatever inflict pains and hardship on the people is a pointer to the consequential oppressions of the people. Humans, as we know them, are the most advanced beings on earth and they are here for existence, nothing else. Whether we are humans, however, depends on how we eat, how we're sheltered, how we receive and impart knowledge, good health care, so that we can all live well and possibly long. A new set of recently selected rulers in Nigeria, led by Ahmed Bola Tinubu, promise and have drastically reduced the purchasing power of Nigerians through their latest anti-people policies targeted at the very people they claimed voted them into office. I've never heard anything like this before. Policies such as the total deregulation of the Nigerian oil sector, which is popularly and incorrectly referred to as subsidy removal, have brought on total hardship on our people. As a result, the cost of gasoline, what you call petrol, which was actually before now too expensive, was severely manipulated so that the petrol is now so expensive so that an average Nigerian have to pay over 600 naira for a liter of fuel. While this astronomical price increase was ruthlessly enforced, the minimum wage of Nigerian workers remained at the lowest, one of the worst in the world. So, do not be deceived when they say uh, we have saved some unreal and bogus one trillion naira. Question is, where is the one trillion naira? And why is it that after saving one trillion naira, your life has not changed? The fact is that the oil barons have made trillions of naira and plenty of dollars thus far as Tinumbu have come to help them destroy the naira by also imposing what they call currency devaluation. How can anyone delete the economic value of the country's currency and expect economic development? That's the question that we ask. So what that means is that the global business community can come by from your market without any real value added to your economy because you don't have a currency. You don't have a real fixed or valuable exchange rate. So floating the Naira was an oxymoron. It's actually throwing the Naira over board so that it could sink to the bottom. And that they have achieved. And the worst has now happened to our people economically. I'm here speaking to you today once again because four years ago, I was abducted by the lawless DSS, a criminal set of officials led by the current guy there, and his name is Isu Bushi, Bichi, of the DSS. As of today, four years ago, I was spending my second day in solitary confinement and detention by the roguish 
state security services who had abducted me from Lagos and flown me to Abuja. The reason they said I was trying to project answers that they are all afraid we shut down the system against their class. I was asking for a revolution and they never denied it. So the story of my abduction, unlawful detention, torture, and human and degrading treatment has been partially told, but more will be firmed up soon. So what is important is that I was never shaken. I had prepared myself for that day and beyond. And I even said before I was taken that there's no judge that can try a people that are fighting for liberation. And today, none has come up and none has succeeded. So Nigerians should never be scared of these cowards. They mostly survived against you because they're exploiting the ignorance of hundreds of millions of Nigeria. They have used fear, poverty, religion, division, and violence to entrench themselves in power. They've captured the Nigerian state because for so long, Nigerians have been complacent and too fearful to fight for their fundamental freedoms and total liberation not only from local oppression, but from neo-colonial oppression. I knew then and now that those who were roaring because they had the instrument of power in their pouch were rogues who only, sorry, whose only goals were the organized robbery of the commonwealth of our people. The very confidence I had was that I've had a long history of resistance from my childhood. Starting from my disdain that I had for the police when they raided my village in Ondo State in 1980. And I'd followed through when forces of oppression imposed the structural adjustment programs on our people in the 80s when I was a university student. I'd also worked assiduously with so many of our compatriots to drive the military out of power when they were the instruments used to subjugate and oppress our people. So as a people, we remain strong, resolute, and unbroken. And as you all know, even when I was in the university as a freshman, I knew better than several of the economics today who said the structural adjustment program was going to build Nigeria out of poverty and entrench prosperity. It never happened, but they have not changed their ways because they lack vision. They don't understand us and they don't understand our economy because they do not represent us as well. You see, I'm not new to poverty. I grew up poor in Niger Delta region, even though the wealth of my nation comes from there. And it's a well-known fact. But my growing up there and my experiences confronting oppression has sharpened my personal disdain for impunity because I feel sad that Nigeria ought to be the most admired nation in the world. It ought to be a country that has progressed beyond this several decades ago. But you know, the rogues controlling our country build booby traps that has now pushed over 150 million citizens of our country on the verge of extinction through what is globally known as multidimensional poverty. In this country, we have 200 million people and nobody can tell you that any one of them is doing well, except a few. So the ineptitude of the economic leaders who are practically incompetent cannot be solved by rewarding them with our complacency or our ignoble humility that could only bring disgrace and more debt. This nation must fight its way out and win. 
We are addressing you today as a movement that has also participated in political activities. But most importantly, we are citizens who believe only the revolution can bring about a new order, whether by ballot or a popular uprising. We know Nigerians are angry, as it is, because the harsh economic conditions, the insecurity in the country, lack of opportunities, and the denigrating conditions under which we live couldn't have made anybody happy. But we have also allowed our leaders to impose upon us very cruel policies that have made life even more harsh. Today, we're here to remind you of the fourth anniversary of Revolution Now, and that since we started the Revolution Now campaign in this country, the country has never been the same. We are here to reach out and thank those of our colleagues, our comrades, brothers, sisters, both in Nigeria and in the diaspora, our friends who may be non-Nigerians, that we're still standing tall and we are determined to achieve a revolutionary end and put an end to what has become the country of sorrow, tears and blood, apology to our great Afrobeat King, Fela and Nicola Fou Kuti. Don't let me forget to thank a lot of our comrades. Many of them in the last four years have come along with me on this journey. Some have been jailed, some have been persecuted, tortured, some have nearly been killed. We have relatives, family members who have had to pay the ultimate price. And we are thankful that they give it all to make sure that their country becomes a better country. We are assuring you that the revolution flame will never die until Nigeria is totally liberated. And those who have made it their duty to impose suffering on our people, to oppress them, to kill them, to keep them in perpetual state of poverty, ashamed and disgraced and permanently deleted from our national space. Thank you very much. Revolution now.